Hello, everyone. My name is Chad Hart. I'm an extension economist with Iowa State University. And what I'd like to do for you today is provide a brief update on what USDA found as they went out into the fields earlier this September. Now, as we've been building up to this point, we've been looking at the possibility of record crops. And in fact, what USDA found was sort of confirmation of the size of the crops we have coming into the marketplace this fall. So as we're looking at so the, the data that USDA released, what they found was that as we're looking at the corn crop, for example, right now, one of the things they do um, starting here in September is they do what they call their objective yield survey. This is where they actually send representatives out into random fields across the country. And then within a random spot within those fields, they assess the corn and soybean crops that they find. It's mainly counting the number of ears we have out there. And then if those ears are mature enough, then they will actually, you know, look at row counts on those ears and look at the, you know, the grain depth that we're seeing there to, to come up with a yield estimate based on the crops they're seeing. And this graphic I have in front of you right now sort of shows you the historical data over the past five years versus what they found over on the far right hand side here for September of 2024. Now, in terms of ears per acre, what we found is that this year's crop doesn't have as many ears as last year, although it does beat the previous four years beyond that. So as you're looking right now, second highest we've had basically over the past five years. But it is the yield on those ears, if you will. While we have fewer ears, we do have more yield per ear showing up out there. And in fact, as you look at the, the data, it shows that as far as the yield estimate is concerned, it is well beyond anything that USDA observers have seen at least over the past five and arguably ever during the time that we've had the objective yield survey. So again, this is sort of confirmation of as we look out there that this crop, this corn crop is the best yielding corn crop um, the country has ever seen. And that is leading to an increase as we look at production across the country. In fact, as you look at those yield estimates, you know, on whether you're looking at the national level or at state level, what we continue to see are very good corn crops, especially across the heart of the corn belt. Final numbers as we look at uh, for the nation, they bumped them up about a half a bushel per acre. So we're now at a, a record 183.6 bushels per acre from a nationwide average. If you look at states like Iowa, they bumped the yield up three bushels per acre here, up to a record 212 bushels per acre. But you're seeing record yielding crops from South Dakota and Nebraska all the way over to Michigan and Indiana and most of the states in between. That's not to say that everybody's looking at a record crop this year. We definitely see that the southeast and the and mid-Atlantic states are having a much smaller crop than they had last year. But last year was their record crop. And so when you're thinking about the, the grand swing of things here, while the southeast is suffering that smaller crop, they're very they're, they're much less of the total when it comes to nationwide production. And so when we're looking at records here across the three I states, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, that's what leads to that record overall national crop. And we saw a similar sort of thing as we're looking at the soybean data. Number of pods out there, you know, in this case, they measured the number of pods per 18 square feet. You can think of that as, okay, you know, let's, again, get a representative spot here and figure out just how many pods are out there. Again, we're not looking at a record number of pods here. In fact, arguably, it sort of falls in between what we've been seeing over the past four years. The pod counts in 2020 and 2023 were higher, but the pod counts in 2021 and 2022 were, well, maybe a little bit below what we're seeing this year. But again, it's the yield we're getting per pod. Those pods are filling out better than we've seen over the past several years. And you can chunk a lot of this up to the, you know, more, the more, more of moisture reaching the crops this year. The past four years, we've had drought conditions somewhere across the country having a major impact on crop productivity. This year, we've had more moisture available, and that is definitely showing up as we look at the yield estimates coming into this fall.
And so when we look at the nationwide average again, it's at a record level. Now, in this case, USDA did not adjust their yield estimate. They cap it at 53.2 bushels per acre, but that was already a record yield. But they did make some adjustments when we're looking at the state level data. Iowa's yield was boosted by two bushels per acre to go to 50 or sorry, 63 bushels per acre. So a record there. And again, you see records across the three I states. But we did see some lower yields again as we look towards the southeast. So overall, you know, the markets are still dealing with this idea of record crops coming into the marketplace. And that did have sort of a negative connotation, at least to start trade after the report was released. But we have seen recovery since then. And a lot of that recovery, I think, is based upon we saw actually usage changes that were bigger than the production changes we saw out of the WASD report on Thursday. So as you look at the U.S. corn crop for 2024, the adjustments that they really made here were, yes, they added a little bit of production, 39 million acres or 39 million bushels to that total, but they also added about 55 million bushels to the usage side, and it was mainly old crop adjustment. So for 2023, they ended up raising the ethanol number by 15 million bushels, the export number by 40 million bushels. So that lowered ending stocks for 2023 by 55 million bushels. That dropped that down to about 1.8 billion, and that 55 million bushels more than offset the production increase. So that meant that 2024 ending stocks also came down as well by about 16 million bushels. So stocks are beginning to, if you will, move in the right direction, but it's just not strong enough to pull prices up yet. As USDA looked at the 2024 25 marketing years we look out there they ended up lowering that season average price by 10 cents so it's now down to four dollars and ten cents a bushel that'd be down 55 cents from what we just captured out of the 2023 crop and down by nearly two and a half dollars from where we were at in 2022. when it comes to soybeans similar sort of thing happened here we had just enough adjustments everywhere that ending stock levels came down for 2023, they ended up adding 5 million to the soybean crush. They also made a slight adjustment to 2024 residual uses of soybeans. So when we looked at that season, that ending stocks number for 2024, that came down by 10 million bushels. Now we're now down to 550 million, but they kept their season average price at the same level, left it at $10.80 a bushel. So, as we're looking here, I think the challenge is we know that the crops are big. Now we're starting to see whether usage will grow to match the size of the crops that we have grown. As it stands right now, I think you're seeing the market sort of saying, yeah, we, are, we think we might be at a bottom, but it's an uncertain bottom at this point in time. As you look at current futures as we close the week out for the week of September 13th, the futures market pointed to a 2024-25 season average price of $4.13. So right in line with where USDA is at with that 410 estimate. As we look out towards 2025-26, you can see that the markets are offering about 30 cents more as we look out there for corn, going up to around the $4.40 mark as we look out there for a season average price estimate. For soybeans, there's a lot of disagreement here, though. USDA stayed at 1080, but when you look at where soybean futures are at right now, they point to something a dollar lower there at 980 right now. But they are showing that improvement as we look out towards 2025 and 2026, building up. But the problem here is that for both corn and soybeans, these season average price estimates are below our production cost estimates. So we are looking at losses financial losses this year and possibly next year as we're looking at where prices are sitting right now. Well, that's a brief update on what we're seeing within the markets right now. Again, my name is Chad Hart. I'm an extension economist with Iowa State University, and thank you for the privilege of your time.